Hey right, guys, another quick little unboxing for you. Six inch height gauge is from Tay Tools. You read on them and when you get it they say height gauge for woodworking. I got it for on this surface plate for one reason and one reason only and that's to measure uh, tool lengths for CNC stuff. And I'll explain to you what I'm doing here in just a minute. But This is one of the relatively inexpensive ones there, you know, $50 height gauge. Let's go ahead and open it up and I'll tell you what I think I know about it so far. And before I said I, I'd uh, had a guy quizzing me about height gauges, and I said I had a height gauge, and I do. I've got a stare at 454 here that if I'm really wanting to do something, why well, we'll get out the stare and, and measure that. But anyway, I want this specifically for measuring lengths on CNC tooling. And these are the standard Chinese scales. And I went with one of these because they're inexpensive. You know, if you go to Tormax, why... They want, I think, $185, something like that, for their scale, which is great. And if you're already set up for a Tormac, maybe they're better than this is. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But um, to start out with this, this is going to do what I think I want it to do. So we'll try it out and see. The reviews on these have not been great. But if I really wanted to use it for a surface gauge and was using it for general use, maybe I'd be happy with it. Maybe I won't. Well, but all I want to do is measure tool lengths. And my long-term plan is, and I've got one ordered, is we're going to drill a 7 8 hole into this service plate. I was going to do it on a smaller service plate, but I think I'm just going to do it on this service plate. We're going to punch a 7 8 inch hole through here so that we can set our Tormac tools down in there and measure our tool height just like they, just like they would uh, be done on the standard Tormac gauges. And... Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't feel bad initially. We don't have any. Some guys have complained that it actually rocked and, and everything was not level on it. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a try and see what it does. But what I'm going to do is decide someplace along here I'm going to put my hole with the way this layout is. It'll probably be on this side someplace. And I'm not sure how I'm going to orient this surface plate for general use. Probably just like this. Um, and the reason is because that, that uh, difference in the granite irritates me right there. It, it's just kind of a distraction for me. So I, um, I'll i probably end up and use this section of the surface plate more than anything else. And With the way the readout sets on this, it's going to read off the side. So we'll probably have a, a tooling hole along this edge someplace, whether I put it clear at the back corner, which may be the best option. But for measuring tools, and like I say, this is basically all I want to do, do with this height gauge. So it's not realistically going to be moved around on the plate. So if it's not exactly true to the world one way or the other as long as it sets securely in that plate so I can touch off in one position that's all it's ever going to do so there again we're back to how accurate do we need it to be now yes I would like a Fowler gauge or a Minotoyo height gauge something like that to be doing all this with but the reality is this is a special purpose tool for one thing it doesn't it's not going to do anything other than this so I'm not really concerned about it Several different options for these, and I'll link a couple of them down in the tool section, or down in the description. I'll link a couple of these in the description down below. Like I say, the, the reviews on these are not great just because of the machining intolerances as far as how accurate they are, their machine, the base is machined, and how vertical the, the columns are and that type of thing. But for my application, it's not going to make any difference as long as I can zero it off the plate and get a consistent height from tool to tool. That's all I'm after with it. Like I say, it'll it'll set in one place. That's what it'll do its entire life. It'll get set on the plate and it'll measure those tool heights. I'm fairly comfortable with these Chinese scales. They're, they use basically the same heads and components with some variations, but they're all basically the same through all of these inexpensive scales. Uh, the protocol in them has changed a little bit over the years and what I know about them is I originally started using these Chinese scales on the Schumatec DROs and I've got several of those and mine were fairly early readouts that I built so that's the only thing that was being set up for them at the very beginning they were designed to handle the, the inexpensive Chinese scale so guys could set them up on their mills and lays and that type of thing which is what I did so the differences between them and the good ones as I've seen it over the years and used it because I've um, my my preference for calipers at the bench is a Mitotoyo digital. Uh, I used dial calipers for years and I still do use my dial calipers but I went to um, a Mitotoyo caliper and I really do like it although the head in mine just went bad so I'm either going to have to replace the head or replace the whole caliper. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet but 
that'll be coming up soon and I'll show that of course when we get it but nonetheless the things that I found that are different between the inexpensive calipers and the real expensive ones or the Mitotoyos, the Starrett's, the Brown and Sharps, that type of thing is accuracy wise I think they're comparable you know they're reading off of a scale as long as as long as they're working properly I think I think repeatability on the Chinese scales is maybe not quite as good as the the higher end calipers or micrometers or height gauges whatever the case may be but it is very good and it's repeatable for use in the home shop there again we're not doing aerospace stuff here the things that um, I find are different is battery life is greatly reduced in the Chinese scales they tend to suck batteries down the way we've gotten around that on things like the the Schumatech DROs is they're powered off the off the digital readout unit itself so battery life really is an issue but if you have these and you you're relying on the batteries on them they the life expectancy of that battery is not nearly as good they use quite a bit more there they draw quite a bit more current so you're going to replace batteries more often the scales are rougher you know when you when you feel the motion of them there's a definite difference between my Mitotoyos and the and the cheap Chinese and and even this one I can feel already there's a little bit of a it's not bad it's not nearly as bad as some um, you take the all oh, the Harbor Freight scales for example and they're quite a bit rougher than than any of the other ones that I've that I've handled this actually is not bad and, and I can live with this fine it's I don't have a problem with this at this point in time anyway that may change as time goes on but for right now it works fine um, but basically being a little bit rougher and um, using using more batteries that's realistically the the main downsides as I see it to these to these um, Chinese calipers and scales type of thing otherwise they they work well like I say I use them on a lot of my Schumatec stuff but there again we're not doing rocket science I'd rather have glass scales um, but for the cost difference it's not worth it to me at this point in time to change them out on my equipment so what we've got is what we've got one of the reasons I picked this one is it's got um, a data output port on it, which a lot of these Chinese scales do. They have changed the protocol in them, so some of the later ones will not, um, as an example, they will not rec be recognized on my early Schumatech stuff, on the, the DRO350s and that type of thing. So they've changed that protocol a little bit on some of the scales, and it's hard to know which is which. But anyway, some of them still will work. My idea with the data port is I can potentially power it with an external power source, is one of the options right there so that will take care of the battery life and at some point in time um, if I advance far enough and this proves satisfactory I would like to be able to interface this with a computer and write into um, both Mach 3 and uh, Fusion 360 into the tool tables so I can bring up my tools on the computer I can measure our height off of this and input that data right here from the from the bench so that's my thinking down the road so um, I've already powered this up. It powers up fine. Battery was already in it. One of the things I do like about this that I did not know is it has a CR2032 3 volt battery cell, which is the, the bigger cells. And this cover is fairly sticky. But it's got these bigger cells, which are a little bit more readily available sometimes. You can still find the smaller cells. They're, out, they're all over the place. And that may make a difference in battery life, too. I believe the smaller cells are only a volt and a half type of thing, whereas this is a 3-volt cell. So that may or may not make a difference in battery life. We'll, we'll run it and see how it does. Um, it's got a good, clear scale on it. Um, and, of course, we can switch from inch to metric, you know, standard on all of that stuff. We can zero it at any point. So what will happen in use for, for what I want to use it is we'll zero it off the table, of course. Zero it right there. I don't know if that's going to show on the camera or not. but um, And then you can set your height for, for where you want it for tool height. And uh, you've got your reading for, for how long that tool is. So anyway, a little unboxing. i got one more coming up. I'm waiting for the UPS truck to show up today. But that kind of gives you an idea of what I think can be done with this. So it's got a decent feel on the plate. Like I say, some people have complained that the, the bases were machined off and they actually rock. This has got a, a good solid feel to it. It's not exceptionally well machined on the base, it doesn't look like. And I already do see a... I see about three spots on it that I don't know if they're gonna... Yeah, those bright shots spots are gonna show up there and there. 
and there and there. So as we work it on this plate, that may that may prove to be an issue, and we may lap it down onto that plate. Um, you know, if we decided to really get fancy, we could try our hand at scraping. That would be a good project to, to scrape. But uh, we'll play with it a little bit and see what it does. So hopefully you found something interesting there. And uh, if you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And my normal spiel, if you haven't, you know, if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch, guys. Okay. Figured I better give you a little bit more than what we had. Been playing with this a little bit. And I don't know if this is going to be, now that I've moved it, I've been playing with it back in this back corner. Found repeatability to be pretty good. Um, one thing I found that I don't like about it is it does not retain its reading. So if you turn it back on here, I had it zeroed off the top of the plate. If you turn it back on up here, why it loses it zero. So let's um, see where it's zero, zero. We're in millimeters right now because that's the gauge blocks that I grabbed. And these are just a couple of scrap gauge blocks. Um, I use them as, as uh, stacking blocks or packing blocks and, and for rough measuring, that type of thing. This is a 25 millimeter and this is a 50 millimeter here. Now see, if we just touch off on the, on the plate and zero it out there, we're still in millimeters. Let's raise it up to above 50. Ring it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that scale or not. Um, we're 5003. And that's still well within their their published um, tolerances. And if we go to a 25 millimeter gauge block here. We're at 2504. So is it perfect? No. Is it good enough for my equipment that I have right now that I'm running the mill on CNC wise? Yes, it is. So anyway, we'll play with this a little bit more and uh, see what it does. Like I say, one of the things I don't like about it is it does not retain its, its positioning. So right now we're at uh, 4327. If we turn it off, and then back on again, we're at zero. Now if we run this to the table just because we can, see there we're 43.24. So let's play with that. Let's zero it back out there again. Let's bring it back up to, we're at 50.52 there. Let's turn it off. We turn it back on, we're zero. And let's run it back down to the bottom again. There we're at 50 50. So two tenths. No, we're still in millimeters. So anyway, it's not too bad. It's not perfect, but um, we'll try it out, see what it does. One of the things I did notice too that you never used to see on any of the other calipers or anything that any of the electronic Chinese scales that you bought is it actually gives your uh, data output information here um, tells you what your positioning are for your for your uh, four connections and uh, gives you your binary code which is a 24-bit and cycles and clock pulses so you never used to have any of that information the guys that that were real electronic whizzes were able to figure that out and publish that but it never came with the uh, equipment so I kind of like that. We'll be able to do something with this maybe.